Uh, Ealing Studios under Michael Balkan made nearly a hundred films and only two of them are set in Scotland, uh, which um, is not very many for a British film studio. British so often tended to mean English. But Ealing made more films in Australia than it did in Scotland, just the two in Scotland, Whiskey Galore and The Maggie, both of them directed by Alexander McKendrick, who, as the name suggests, uh, was a Scot himself, although he'd spent much of his life in America, but his prime allegiance uh, really was to Scotland. And he directed uh, Whiskey Galore uh, and The Maggie, and he also wrote the story for, for The Maggie. Now, these two films have sometimes been seen as an embarrassment. Uh, Scottish critics, particularly nationalist Scottish critics, uh, have uh, regarded the treatment of Scotland as, from one point of view, sentimental, from the other point of view, patronising, depending on whether you're sort of considering it from inside or outside, uh, too ready to seize on the uh, traditional image of the Scots as, as, as quaint and, um, uh, and, and distinctive and uh, characteristics associated with whisky and heather uh, and um, uh, being different and um, all the stereotypes that you associate associate with Scottishness. Now, I think um, uh, this, this needs challenging, if, if that case is still made. The, the, the case that's made against the Maggie is that it is uh, sentimentally stereotyping in taking as a representative of Scotland and Scottish culture uh, this, this boat, the puffer, this little inefficient boat uh, organised very inefficiently by its captain and, and its crew, which by a series of misunderstandings gets commissioned by uh, an American executive to transport some things to his, what is clearly going to be his holiday home in a remote, uh, r remote-ish part of, of Scotland. And this, the puffer, the Maggie, uh, manages to get the job and lets him down and makes a mess of it at every turn. But with typical uh, lovable Scottish cunning, uh, they uh, manage to foil him and ultimately uh, and, and stop him from taking the commission away. Uh, so there's a sort of battle of wits between the lovable, stereotyped, uh, roguish, clever Scots and the hard-headed American businessman uh, who is, is defeated by them. Now, the film's sympathies uh, seem to be much more complicated than that. They're not entirely with, with the Scots. The charge against the Maggie uh, is, is that it is uh, sentimental and indulgent towards the old boat, just as the Titfield Thunderbolt, another Ealing film of around the same period, uh, is sentimental towards the little railway. Uh, and celebrates its victory over harder commercial forces. Now, the Maggie is much more complicated. It's made by, uh, a, a, by a team, a writer-director team, William Rose and Alexander McKendrick, who went on to make The Lady Killers, which is like the Titfield Thunderbolt in a way, in, in being a, a, a brightly coloured picture of English um, uh, small-scale Englishness, the, the woman who runs the, uh, who runs the house in The Lady Killers, um, but has a, 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 a much sharper uh, and more ruthless take on, on the conflicts. McKendrick himself said that he had a lot of sympathy with the American, and th all the time in The Maggie, I think you can see um, that there's another Scotland there that the Maggie is not typical of Scotland. Uh, the Maggie is chosen by a series of misunderstandings to do this job, and it doesn't do the job well. In some ways, the people, um, the, the, the crew and the captain are, are, are lovable and admirable and clever. Um, but th there's always a sense that, that there's, there are other boats there. The Maggie only gets the job because there's a confusion between the clearly efficient boat, which is waiting at the pier in Glasgow, and this inefficient boat, uh, this lovable decadent boat, uh, which happens to be adjacent and it is uh, chosen through a misunderstanding. There is that other Scotland and those other Scots in the film 
who have um, a, a non-sentimental, non-proud attitude to the Maggie. Uh, and that's typical of the complexity uh, of the film and the complexity of the sympathies in the film. Um, and one factor that makes these complexities so vivid uh, is the quality of Alexander McKendrick's direction. Uh, when he left films in the 1960s, he was one of the first people to teach filmmaking, to teach the actual craft of how you move from shot to shot, of where you place the camera, of how you put a sequence together to put your viewpoint across. And the, the Maggie is just a pleasure to watch on the level of shot-by-shot shot construction. Look particularly at the scene where, the crucial scene where the Maggie is chosen um, over the uh, the, the proper boat which is next to it in the yard. It's beautifully organized so that we understand uh, that the person who is commissioning uh, the job thinks that uh, he is being offered the big boat, uh, but in fact he is signing forms which commission the little boat. Uh, it's made absolutely clear who knows what and who is keeping quiet, who realizes and is keeping quiet, and who does not realize. And the butt of, the, of all of that uh, is an Englishman. So it's not just America versus Scotland, it's America versus England versus Scotland. The agent who makes the mistake of signing the contract for the Maggie uh, is an Englishman, played by Hubert Gregg, played beautifully by Hubert Gregg as, as a caricature. So it's a complicated three-way in international interaction and in a way uh, the American is the uh, is the one who has the most moral sympathy fr from the film and has the perspective coming in as Calvin B. Marshall, uh, the name uh, representing, evoking Marshall Aid, the man bringing money into Europe uh, post-war, and Calvin, uh, the, the kind of puritanical, joyless, uh, work-oriented um, associations of, of that, that word. Um, so I've, I've mentioned uh, Pusey, the Hubert Gregg character, uh, and there's also uh, another key figure to mention, and that is the young boy, uh, billed as the wee boy on the credits, uh, but he's given a name later, Doogie played by Tommy Kierins, who's not one of those uh, child actors who goes on to have a career. He, he, he left films. But this is a really memorable performance where he, uh, he, he bridges um, the, the sympathies, um, the, the different sympathies in the film. He's a member of the crew. He's profoundly loyal to the captain, uh, uh, but he understands um, the point of view of the American and it, at the very end of the film he wishes the American good luck as he goes away without his cargo towards what sort of future we don't know. And that's crucial that he, he does wish him good luck. Uh, and he is, um, if you take him away from the film, it would still be um, a, a, a complicated film with its triangle of England, America, Scotland, and also another Scotland that we always feel in the background that is more efficient less sentimental. Uh, but uh, the, the boy, uh, as so often in McKendrick's films, he was a great director of children, um, the, the boy gives it an extra dimension of complexity.